Hello, and welcome to the Nintendo Power Retrospectives. I'm Count Zero, and this week's episode, after we are back, by the way, from, well, the school year, old school term, getting in the way, and lots of homework, and all that nasty stuff, the, the glamorous life of a college student, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and this week we are going to be doing a little shorter episode this time, because we are looking at another one of Nintendo Power's strategy guide issues, specifically... The strategy guide issue covering Ninja Gaiden 2, the Dark Ship of Doom. Okay, Dark Ship. Anyway, let's get started. The cover for the strategy guide is... <laughs> oh, wow. Ninja Gaiden can't catch a break when it comes to cover art, can it? Ooh. Well, there's one more game for the NES left. Maybe that one will be better. The guide replicates the game's cutscenes through the use of graphic novel slash comic book styled sections. The guide also gives us a rundown of some of the new mechanics that appear in this game. Aside from Ryu now being able to climb up walls in addition to clinging to them, something he could do in the Japanese version of the first game, he's also able to get shadow clones, which can attack and use special abilities at the same time that the main character uses special abilities, and the ability to launch special attacks while clinging to walls. From here, we get into maps of each of the game's levels, though the game skims on strategies for some of the boss fights from the end of the game. I don't know if this is a situation where the game counselors were unable to meet the bosses before the deadline, or if they just with chose to withhold that information to avoid giving out spoilers. If it's the latter, then that's kind of a jerk move, considering that this is otherwise a complete strategy guide everything that you need to beat this game. If it's the former, then that kind of speaks to the difficulty of, the, of this game. As far as Ninja Gaiden 2 itself is concerned and its gameplay, the game is a clear improvement over the first title in the series. Retaining the ability to climb walls changes the game dramatically and gives players additional options when it comes to navigating environments and dealing with boss fights. In the first game, if you stuck to the stuck to a wall at the wrong place, you were kind of out of luck. Here, it's possible to recover from that. Additionally, the Shadow Clone power gives a whole bunch of new options for taking out enemies and fighting bosses. In particular, it allows the player to amplify the amount of damage they're dealing to a target or to pull up in a safe spot while slashing a boss to hell and back. That said, the, the game is still difficult, but it retains the tough but fair difficulty of the first game, as opposed to some of the cheap crap that other NES titles would engage in to extend playtime. I cannot recommend Ninja Gaiden 2 enough. This is an excellent game for the NES, and honestly, one of the best titles in the series. Like, I'm, I'm by say one of, I'm not just talking the NES ones, because then it's a short list, because it's a trilogy. But the entire Ninja Gaiden franchise, um, from the arcades to, well, modern systems, Ninja Gaiden 2 probably holds up the strong, it holds up in one of the strongest positions of the series. It is as with the other games um, of this era, it's tough but fair. But it feels more balanced, feels more even, and the features that were taken out for the U.S. release of Ninja Gaiden 1 have been put back in, in addition with some new powers which allow for different play styles. So, I definitely, definitely recommend you pick this up, whether on Virtual Console, whether... If you have a console that will let you play NES games on it for that, this is definitely worth your time and money. Next time, we're going back to normal issues of Nintendo Power with issue number 16. I'll see you then.